Good evening. I'm Pastor James Capers, and we are here at Salem Lutheran Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we are so glad that you are joining us for this Ash Wednesday service. Um, if you are part of this ministry, you have received your ashes uh, by mail, and uh, perhaps you picked them up on Sunday. Also, uh, in this service, we will it will be a communion service, so please have your um, elements ready. Your fruit of the vine of choice, either grape juice or wine, and also some bread. We will begin our service. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive you, the God of our mercy, all pardon and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abiding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, Assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave, leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery by a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Have mercy on me, O God, According to your steadfast love. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me against you only have i sinned and done what is evil in your sight so you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment have mercy on me O oh god according to your steadfast love. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother. 
mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me no wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A troubled and broken heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. The second lesson, a reading from 2 Corinthians, 520b to 610. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, we be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true as unknown, and yet are well known as dying, and see we are alive as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure themselves so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. But where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we love you, and we worship and praise your name. We thank you for this time of preparation we ask that you cause us to follow in Jesus' footsteps that we might be transformed into your will for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Forty Days of Transformation. The preaching text for this evening comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, where it reads, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Well, sisters and brothers, tonight we begin another season. It is the second preparatory season in the church year. The first is, of course, in Advent, which means coming. And in, during that season, we are getting ready for Jesus' birth. But this is the second preparatory season. We call it Lent. It is preparation for the recounting of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Call the day of resurrection, AKA Easter. This season is 40 days long. And if you count from today through April the 17th, minus Sundays, it is 40 days. Rick Warren, the pastor of Saddleback Church in Southern California, has written much material and has made his church a lot of money on this concept of 40. But why 40? Whether it is literal or figurative, we find the importance of 40 from the scriptures. In Genesis, 
the earth, according to the writer, exceeding, was exceedingly sinful. People were running amok. But there was one community that stayed faithful to God. It was Noah and his family of eight. And what happened? It rained 40 days and 40 nights. You can read that in Genesis chapter 7. 40 days of wrath and judgment. And then there was another 40. Uh, just think about the days of Mo Moses. Hebrews were in slavery in Egypt. They worked hard under their taskmasters. They suffered. And God had mercy on them, brought them into the picture of having them sent one called Moses. And Moses led them out of that slavery. They went into the wilderness. And as they were in the wilderness, the Hebrews began to complain about food. But God sent them manna. And manna is a word that means, what is it? So they ate this, what is it? For 40 days. You'll find that in Exodus chapter 16. So we might say that there were 40 days of provision. And of course, there was the great mountain, Mount Sinai. There was a cloud that covered the mountain. Moses went up that mountain and he stayed there for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. You'll find that in Exodus chapter 24. We then might say that there were 40 days of fellowship and revelation. That's what happened on Mount Sinai. The Hebrews were, were in the wilderness. How long? Not one year, not two years, but 40 years. And the reason was because of their disobedience. And therefore, you might say that there were 40 years of testing. And then we go to the New Testament. We find Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. Jesus went to be baptized in the River Jordan to associate himself with us. The Holy Spirit came on him. A voice came from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then Jesus went into a wilderness and there he was tempted by the devil. How long? For 40 days. You can read this in Luke chapter 4. Again, with Jesus, there were 40 years of testing. So what can we learn about all of this? In any period of time, sometimes we might experience things that feel like wrath. We feel like the world is coming right upon us and it is, it is happening so often that we feel like God is responsible. And so we think that we are experiencing the wrath of God. Then also there's uh, during this period of time of 40, it's a, a, a period of testing. We are sometimes halt between two or more opinions, whether we should go this way or go that way. It feels like it's a time of testing. Then there is um, this idea of fellowship and revelation. But thank God that there are times like what Peter, James, and John experienced when they were on that Mount Hermon when Jesus was transfigured. Also, when Moses was on Mount Sinai, it was a time when God was revealing something else about who Jesus was and what he is. And we see that as a time where we can find out who Jesus is in our lives. It's a time of fellowship and revelation. And then there are those times of provision where God opens a door, God makes a way out of no way, God meets the need, God reveals in us that we have the capacity to make it. It is all planted within ourselves because God has put it there. God provides. But what is common 
to all of these 40s is transformation, change. The Greek word morphio means change. It's the same word that is used when Jesus is on uh, that Mount Hermon in the transfiguration. And tonight, on this Ash Wednesday, we are beginning 40 days. As we enter this 40-day period, let us look for God's transformation. Let us look forward to God's transformation in our lives. And let us pray, Lord, transform me in my personal life and also in my habits. Let us also pray, Lord, transform me in my mission. And then let us also pray, Lord, transform me in my witness. According to the word of God, it was the Holy Spirit who led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days where he was tempted by the devil. Liturgically, you and I are being led into the wilderness of Lent for 40 days to get into spiritual warfare. During that time, we are encouraged to certain acts that will complement our walk. Well, first of all, we are being invited for a time of fasting and prayer. Not only going without food for part of the week or maybe part of the day, perhaps our fasting could be from looking at TV on certain days of the week. You know, those favorite programs that we like to look at. Maybe we need to fast from those programs. Or perhaps we might go uh, fasting and, and praying during those times that we normally use for playing video games. Endeavoring, for instance, for just a moment to stop thinking about the problems that we are going through, but thinking and doing for someone else. Or praying for a list of people that we will list and name, that we will provide spiritual support by praying for them and by calling them and encouraging them. So first of all, we need to maybe do some fasting and praying. And maybe in our fasting and praying, we can establish a devotional Bible reading time and, and prayer as a part of our day. Perhaps as a part of this fellowship, those of you who belong to Salem Shalom, maybe you might actually join the Zoom Bible study that goes on on Saturdays at 10 a.m. in the morning. Those of you who are seeing this from a distance, you can join this Bible study as well. Just go to our website and you'll find out or click on the link where you will be able to um, participate in the Bible study on Saturdays. And maybe if you have not been in worship with a community of faith, maybe during this season of Lent, you would make a commitment to worship with the community, with the whole body of Christ regularly. On the Lord's Day, each Sunday morning, gathering with God's people to receive God's gifts and also to give God thanks and praise for who God is. And then during this period of 40 days, look around you. Find ways to serve others, to get into a new habit this time a habit of serving, not thinking just simply about yourself, but asking the question, who has a need and do I have the ability to serve them? That's what you can do for these 40 days. 
And maybe for these 40 days, you might do something like writing your congressperson, going to rallies to, to stand with others who are being oppressed by the powerful. That's what we can do for these 40 days. These are but a few suggestions as we enter this season of Lent. And I guarantee you, if you do any of these things, you will look for these 40 days to bring transformation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess, we confess to, to you and to, to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. During the time of the Old Testament prophets, when they had preached God's word to God's people, and they understood that they had sinned before God, what they would do was they would cover themselves in sackcloth and ashes. In remembrance of that, we also are planting ashes on our foreheads. So I'd ask that you would please get your ashes ready. And as you take the ashes, you can make a sign on your forehead and repeat these words. Behold, you are dust and to dust you shall return. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all that are in need. Renew your church, O God. When we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance, and to guide your people toward justice, lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church's doors open to those who have felt excluded. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each of us from practices of environmental exploitation to become responsible stewards of all you have made. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew our civic life, O God. 
teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed, and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Renew our lives, O God. Spare your people from diseases of the body, mind, or spirit, and send healing to those overcome by illness or grief, especially those we name now. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Renew this congregation, O God. During these 40 days of Lent, confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As we mark ashes on our foreheads, we give you praise, O God, for all the saints who died and yet are alive with you. Receive us with them into your internal e embrace. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us prepare for the Holy Communion. Would you please put your elements before you? Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same manner also he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And together let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now please uh, take the bread. Let us eat together. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now let us take the cup, let us drink together. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> let us pray. Merciful God, Accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Now a couple of announcements. Um, we have now entered the season of Lent. Our worship will be slightly different on each Sunday. And we would especially invite you to continue to join us during this 40-day period for Lent uh, each Sunday at 1030. And you'll be able to see this um, on YouTube. And of course, we are worshiping in place. So please join us at 1030 each Sunday. And then we want to invite you to come to our Bible study. It's a Bible study. We are studying the book of Isaiah. And we are starting, I think, this coming Saturday in the um, 10, 40th chapter of Isaiah. Please join us at 10 a.m. All you need to do is contact us uh, and request the link. And we will be able to send you that link. And you can join us for our Bible study. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me in my trials Lord walk with me in my trials Lord walk with me when my heart is almost breaking Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When my head sorrow. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus